Welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. Well, we had a great response to something we put up about a day in the life of GP, because people wanted to know, I kept emailing us, how often do you go fishing, mate? Well, I don't go as often as you think, because I actually, like many of you guys out there, have to work in between fishing. And there's nothing worse than having good weather, and you know it's good weather, and you can't get out fishing. Doesn't matter whether it's sea, beach, boat, river, lake, whatever you want to get out there. There's no way around it. We are unfortunately shackled to work and shackled to the chase for the dollar. A lot of you guys out there know that. That's why it's popular when we put these little films up. I'm gonna call it a fish vlog. I think that's what we're gonna call it. Basically, I'm trying to get my jobs done. A guy's emailing us saying, well, what happened to that flat you're working on? What was the next job? We wanna see the next bit. They seem to like those little DIY tips. So, it's gonna be a DIY and a bit of fishing on there. If you don't wanna watch it, guys, Please don't let us force you. It is free. So just, if you don't want to watch it, don't watch it. But there's DIY, there's fishing, it's what a lot of guys do, or you can call it DIY. I do it yourself, is what I do, and I FIY, I film on my own. That's not FIY, is it? Anyway, you know what I'm saying. So we're gonna go and give it a shot. I'm gonna try and rush to finish my job, try and buy myself those extra few hours that I could squeeze in, rush down the beach, hour and a half away and try and get some action. It is difficult, I know, trying to balance work together with the fishing, but I'm not one of those guys that sit out there around a lake or something, day upon day upon day, catching fish after fish. No, I have to work. It's the way it is. We're all in the same boat there, guys. Let's get down and do a bit of work and a bit of fishing, see what comes out of it. Well, I'm back here for another one of those day in the life of GP. I was pleased to catch those fish. The last two trips, I did good fishing with the Xander. I had a brilliant, what, well, beach shore fishing uh, trip down on the south coast. Really, really good. However, back to reality, as we all know it is. Bathrooms were already done, we're working our way downstairs. If you remember in the first part where I showed you the disgusting damp they let get, well, just take hold, damp, mildew, mould, poor ventilation. We've got to get all that sorted. I've stripped down the base down here now. We've got all that off. I'm going to damp proof course it as well with some injection, uh, I'm going to call them pills or tubes that you can get. Uh, Clara's going to come and check a damp leak out up there. And I'll show you, I've had a bit of a bizarre take on the kitchen, which I was going to tidy up. I better undo this because it's a bit of a shock even for me. I mean, there's, there's tidying up, there's tidying up. Unfortunately, guys, I have a great affinity for something called a club hammer and a wrecking bar. And I'm now really in at the deep end, there is no kitchen. I've gutted the entire thing out. All the cabinets, I'm probably gonna have these two cabinets down here. Fridge, I'm gonna relocate over there. Washing machine was over here by that socket. I'm relocating here, I stripped all the old uh, paneling off there. I'm gonna PVA and bond that, cause it's an old wall. I'm then gonna put uh, some, some cladding over it. A little bit of stub work there with some battening. But look at this, what is this all about, people? This was buried underneath the cabinets and it goes up in, it goes inside here. I mean, God, I mean, I found the two pipes coming down. There's a hot and cold feed in 15 mil with what looks like compression joints. Third degree on the copper there. This floor is wet, so it's having a leak. And I'm gonna get all these cut out. The plumber's gonna come. And as you can see with the washing machine there, I can put the fridge here, okay? That frees up this entire corner here. I'm trying to retain those tiles if I can, because hopefully the 600mm or 300mm wide cabinets will come up against the original fitting of that, and I haven't got to take those off. Maybe, who knows? That's right, I've already done a, a, well, three quarters of a day's work here. Electrician's come, the Sparky, as we call them in England, he's come. He's going to reroute and upgrade, uh, I think, to a 20 amp fuse for one of the uh, uh, circuits going through here. You can check the ring mains. Electrics have been done here, but an electrician before. And a bit of tinkering going on. So back to work with a bump. And this, this one, I've had all the flooring up. Stripped back there. That's probably gonna have to have what they call a stabilizing solution on it. Injection molding underneath, perhaps below the uh, skirting board level. And so it goes on. I fear no fishing today. Maybe tomorrow I might, might be able to squeeze forward, it all depends. But I'm going to push on as you do in life. Job's going to be done, someone's got to do it, no one's doing it for me. 
Uh, so I'll get that done and buy me some fishing time because when I've been doing this for you guys, a day in the life of GP, I, GP, I think it's been proving pretty lucky. A lot of work, but you only get out of life what you put in. There is no fear of me going fishing at the moment. I just took too much work on this. This stuff's called cladding. You can also get it patterned. There was like a really ancient 50 year old panelling on there, really hardwood panelling. I, just, I was going to leave it, I ripped it all out. I'm going to finish off there and then I'm going to start the cladding. Just got a few more cuts to make and then the interesting bit, making it look better. That's the best bit about it. John the plumber's just arrived. Here's the man of the moment, and he's going to tell us what you're going to do there, John. Just explain. So, yeah, I've already told the people about this pipe, and they've seen all that pipe in this bazaar. So, yeah, what would you recommend? Out. That's all coming out. Uh, we're going to drill a hole through here. It's going to pop out the other side. We're going to go around, connect under the sink, and everything will be as it should be. And then down here, I'll just chop these out down the bottom and then yeah, bury them. Yeah, they'll be dead soon, but they're still live at the moment. <laughs> Yeah. Now, John, they got the hot and the cold. If people know, just so they know, they can see the red for the hot and the blue for the cold on these isolator valves. So, we're not going to be using the hot. Why is that? Oh, washing machines are all cold fill now. I don't know why. So, we can get rid of that pipe totally? Yeah, we'll get rid of the hot completely. We'll get rid of the cold as well, but yeah, we only need a cold fill to this washing machine. So, the last joint we need to solder. And in a minute we'll see the capillary action happening. So you get all the little black dots on the pipe. And when you see it going black like that, you see the little dots, that normally means it's ready to, to run. So it sucks it back up inside? Yeah, it? that's what the capillary is. But it's really better to feed it all round, I always think, just to be sure. It wouldn't pass any um, beauty competitions, but it's not going to leave. And I'm sure it's number one. Probably got that little bit hot, really, but anyway, it's all right. And that's sufficient, that's going to hold? Yeah, that's going to hold. But let's, uh, let's turn it on. No. Yeah, <laughs> see what happens. What about that, like a push fit pipe? You, when would you use those, or do you not use push fits I now? I try not to use push fit. I think they're a little bit unreliable. Yes, yes. I've couple, never trusted them. I've never I've trusted them. a couple them. blow apart, and when they do, it makes massive damage. Yeah. Especially on mains. So this is old school? This is yeah, the old this school is old way. school. Tried and tested. Although I'm only 21, I still... Uh, yeah, does not look bad, yeah. I use the old methods. Now what you're doing now is, just so folks know, this is a compression joint, would that be right? Yeah, well, I'm going to replace the stopcock because someone's changed the stopcock. Well, they've put like a tap head in a stopcock body, yeah. which I've never seen before. So um, it worked, but... Yeah, but I figure that's going to crack in the top think, of that. I think we should change it, yeah. Yeah, yeah we'll go for that. Connoisseur wouldn't be And you put that, uh, that PTFE tape yeah. in, it's just an extra sealer? I always put thread tape around olives and it, it almost guarantees you're not going to have a leak as long as you push everything together properly. Well, I mean, that's much better. John's just gone. You can see that's all stopcock. All the pipes gone through the wall. I was thinking to come around the outside. What a complete idiot. Uh, neatly clipped up here, and he's reduced the waste pipe so the washing machine can go in there and the fridge next to it. I've finished all the cladding around here now. That's as far as I can go. So I'm now going to move across into the dreaded lounge. Starting here, I can start on kitchen cabinets. I PVA'd that uh, wall below this uh, dado rail and let that PVA go off and then I'm going to start putting on all, all the battening here. That's going to go on, then cladding around the edge of that as well. Got to be honest guys, I don't think we're going to get fishing tonight. I think it's going to have to be tomorrow. And the downside is I had a horror story with the wife's car this morning. I'll have to show it to you. It's extremely expensive and it was my fault. Oh dear. Well guys, it's the ultimate start to the day. Yesterday when I came out, the wife said, I've got a flat tire on the car. Oh dear, it's a puncture. In the cold, we take the wheel off, Mike comes round, we take the wheel off, I take it to my cousin, who obviously a tire repair person. Let's let this lorry go past. We get it repaired. I said, what was in it? He said, one of your screws, Graham. Great, it gets worse, guys. I go to back into the garage, I think, I'll wheel the tyre over, or shall I put it in the boot? Open the boot lid, 
Now I just wheel it over on the ground. Wheel it over on the ground, come and got the car, and then what? Reverse the car into the garage with the lid up on the wife's car. Big bang, big bill, big dent. OMG, I've had to bend and buckle this back of here to try and get it to close so we've got central locking, otherwise it won't lock the car at all. Huge great big dent on there. What can I say? I might as well just go to work. I'm safer there. Has anybody else out there ever reversed their car into the garage door or lift the lid up like me like a total twat? Sad but true. Okay, John the plumber's gone. I've now moved in the lounge. I've finished the cladding around there. Going to leave those existing tiles up. But I've decided now to strip back half of the kitchen of tiles and remove that kitchen cabinet. Another job. So I feel it's going to be ongoing quite a bit here. Just a little tip if, if anybody wants any tips. This is me saying my tips. Might not be the expert's way of doing it. It's my way of doing it on my property. So that's the way it is. Right. You're going to put some battens up like this. What they call battening to fix some cladding to. And do the same in here as I've done in the kitchen. So I'm going to use some, some battening here. So what you want to do really, this is the way I do it, is you've got the drill head size here, this is just for DIY guys, you've got the drill head size and you've got the drill bit. You want to make sure that when you drill through the wood, you don't use a drill bit that's too big and wider than the head. So in other words, if you look at the head there, how wide that is, you want to drill this underneath that thickness there because you want those bits of thread to bite into the wood. Don't just want it sliding straight through. So you get your drill bit there. Now I'm going to go into masonry, so you need a masonry drill bit. But what I do, just change these over. I like to start making a small hole first. Okay, and then I finish with a bigger one. Because sometimes, depending on the brickwork, it's very hard. If you start with a big drill, it just chunks great big bits out. And you're left with a bigger and bigger, bigger hole. And worse still, the drill bit starts skating off to one side. It's not good. Any DIYers out there, probably professional builders have had that happen, it's not, it's not great, you have to start drilling all over again. So start with a small drill bit masonry in the wall first, which almost like a pilot, and then go for the big one, okay? I'm gonna use my regular raw plugs here that go in. Again, get the right raw plug size for your screw. I'm gonna be using here decking screws because they've got a very wide, I don't know what the name of that is, but it's very wide thread spacing, I'm gonna call it there. Okay, so first my wood one, got to fire some holes in here in the wood. Just like that, about six inches in. Then I'm going to offer it up to the wall, but not with my wood drill. If you do that into masonry, that's going to burr the end off and it won't cut wood. So I want my small masonry drill there. There we go, fire it in. And if it's got a hammer setting, I find rather than just let the jaws grip the tip of it, which you can bend, slide it right down so it hits the base and make sure when you tighten the chuck up, that the drill is running straight like that. So I'm going to fire my holes in here, just offer my wood up there, it's going to be my piece of battening. I've got my two pilot holes drilled. Make sure you've reset the drill to hammer drill, because that's what you need, a hammer drill setting to get through brickwork, and make your first hole holding it nice and tight. Be careful when you pull it out that you don't move that hole there. Okay, now what you can do if you've got a long piece at the other end and you obviously can't hold it, you've got to get these holes lined up level. We use what we call a dead man, which is a piece of wood of the same measurement here that you want the holes at and you jam it up underneath and that holds it. It's like a spare man, if you like. So do this left-handed just because it's camera-wise. I haven't moved it. Just discovered from my ringing in my ears I forgot to put my ear defenders on. Now you know where the two holes are you could mark them if you want but look I can see where they are. Change the drill bit size, put the ear defenders on and finish the hole. Okay so I've got my raw plug that's going to go in and what you want to do is go a little bit longer than the raw plug to allow for a length of a screw to split that plastic out. So what you can do is just here there, you can put a piece of electrical tape round. It's just an old school way of getting a mark so you know the depth you're going at. My dad used to do it all the time. I could normally guess because I can see where the actual brickwork's coming out. So go a little bit longer than the length of the raw plug. 
So there's my raw plug. Just now, if this pinches at all going in, I try and take it out. That's gone in. This one over here. Just gently tap it in. Now, common co common problem that all, we all have as DIYers is, oh dear, the two screw holes don't line up. They do it like this and try and find the holes. And I can tell you what happens. Let's get a screw. It goes. Let me get that camera down there. It goes into the side of the masonry and the raw plug, and that's a nightmare because it just keeps crumbling and crumbling. It's got to go in the centre. What I do here is I put the screws through first, right the way through. Everybody must have a different way of doing this. I don't know. As I say, this is my way of doing it. I'm telling me tens of thousands of raw plugs I must have put in over the years. Now, there the screw tips are out. What you can do then is align the screw tips up. You've got the distance there, you can actually see the screw tips. If one's very slightly out, I can ease it across. And of course, some of these have actually got torches with them. So I could just gently squeeze the trigger on this particular model. And there's my torch, it's, it's lined up there. Check it out here, it's lined up there. I hold it. I do a little bit on each one in case they're just out a tad. It takes the wood in. Get my hammer, give it a bang. That's pinched up. Then put the rest of the drill in. If you want to bury these, use a higher torque setting on the drill. You can bury it in this. Batten wood is quite soft. Well, boys, it's getting a bit like a bomb site here, as you can see, no doubt. I've got all the kitchen cabinets I'm starting to pull out ready. I get those uh, all sorted going to be next week. I've started on this one, working this one out. Uh, ceiling's done, wall's done. Started on that there. I'm now ready to go fishing, and I'm going to go down the beach. Full moon, I mean, I always used to think it was bad fishing on a full moon, but I've got a feeling it could be good, because the wind's down. I've not heard anything being caught down there for a while. So I'm going to give it a go. I've worked really hard. I'm due a fish. Let's crack on and see what we can do. Well, guys, I'm down here on what they call, I think they call it, well, I call it Hearst, but Hearst Castle. It's on the south coast of England, opposite the Needles, which is over there. I'll show you in a minute. You probably won't see it because I've, I've not bought the big camera. I'm down. I think they call it Milford, Milford Shingle, Milford Bank, something like that. Anyway, I've got two rods out. I've got the the old beach shelter up here because there's no other anglers here just bar two I passed on the way which is about to pack up they have given a horrendous forecast I've taken a huge gamble after all that work I did in the flat I thought you know what I'm going to go for it anyway I just looked at the charts and there seemed to be a gap of none storm force winds for about three hours now generally you would fish after a storm after a big blow here in the winter in England if you've got the outside chance of a cod <laughs> very outside chance, then you either fish all night with loads of bait, or it's like Joe Evans, the rest of us are working, you haven't got much choice, you have to fish when you fish. But there's always a chance after a blow, but I'm doing it before a blow. But at the moment, my grip leads aren't holding very well, it's still flooding. I spoke to the guy in the tackle shop, Lonnie's or Lonies or whatever they call it, and uh, he told me there's a sort of double tide effect down here opposite the Isle of Wight, uh, and that's what uh, keeps it up. It might be about two hours, so I'm looking at my watch, 12.30, it must stop any time now, and I should get a little bit of a flood. I'd like to be fishing an ebb tide, which I, the locals tell me ebb tide at night is good here. Big fish, you know? <laughs> I can't do that because the storm's going to hit about five. It might even be earlier. It's been raining, here we are. As you can see, not very nice. Well, I'll tell you what, guys, it's fishable, isn't it, at the moment? Over way, way in the back there, I don't know if you can see that. That's the Needles and the Isle of Wight over there. My God, they look like a bite, but I think it's actually, there's so much tide that it's making my, uh, my rod top jump. On the left hand one, I don't have a big grip. This one on the right, I do have a big grip. So when I cast out again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wheel it and put a heavier grip on. And there you can see is the Isle of Wight in the distance over there. I'm gonna take a gamble and stand up. It stopped raining. Way, way over the back there is the end of what they call Hearst Bank. I'll look back this way, that's the next storm cloud coming. That's another storm cloud there. And away in the distance, that's, um, I guess that's Milford there, I don't know. But it's starting to stir up quite a bit. You can see by the white water there, two guys, I think they're just packing up down there. 
It's got to be sensible men, haven't they? But here we are. You can see it's a big, big storm beach. And it's, it's all coloured up. And they tell me it can be good for a big fish. Listen, I mean, for any fish, it look on face value it's going to be a blank. Waves are getting bigger and getting closer. As is that huge black cloud. Oh, this has been pushed up by a previous storm. Tonight's storm is going to be over the top of this bank, I should think, by which time I hope to be tucked up in bed. So here we are. I've got a couple of rods out there. One not so far, 50 yards, the other one about 100, 110, but that's the one that's dragging, because don't forget, the more line you have out, the more tide is acting on that line, and the more chance the lead's going to drag. Bait-wise, back in here, I've got... Here's something a bit unusual for you people. Oh, oh, also, there's my seat. The bait bucket turned upside down. I'm using some of this, which is really good for catfish. Lampreys, they've got a load of blood in there, and you can see the blood in the bottom. I've got sections of lampreys, and then I've got two lots off the tackle shop of rag and lug. And I'm lashing them together. I'm really into combo baits at the moment, and I'm lashing these two together. OK, these are the two baits I'm just going to show you before the storm gets too bad. This is lug worm here. These are, these are called lug worm. Let's get a couple out there. There, now they are absolutely the great bait for cod. And generally, guys in the know would pile about six or eight of these on. But I can't afford to do that, what these guys cost. They're quite expensive for what they are. But listen, I haven't got time with work to go and dig them, so you've got to pay for them. But I'm going to be using a couple of those. I might put them on small hooks. These are lugworm, and they reckon the cod like those because they say it's full of amino acid. That was it years ago. And then here, here we go. These are, which you may have seen before on our fishing films, the ragworm. There we go. And just at the front here, he has pinchers. Now, I don't know if he's going to throw his pinchers out or not. We'll try it. Well, you've seen, and trust me, they can give you a little nip there. They've got pincers, and they're, they're much tougher than a, than a lugworm. But anyway, I'm making combo bouts out there, so basically I've got a piece of lamprey, a section of lamprey, and a couple of lugworm whipped on one, and the other one's got a section of lamprey and a couple of lug or rag. I'm just mixing them up. I've got no squid, nothing else. I'm going to give it a go and just tough it out and see how long I can last. Well, grab boys in my little camp, all I bought, I'm not bringing cooking stuff, I'm not bringing the big camera, i just got a small handheld. Flask, sandwiches, and that's it. That's all I'm going to be using, and hopefully, well, see how long I can fish for. The closer I get to dark, the more my chance goes up, no question. Got to be better than working, though, isn't it, surely? Out there, the needles are being obscured by the driving rain. I can't put the camera right round, but you can see how black it is out there. Hello, was that a bite or was that a weed? I've got a load of weed on the line. I've already wheeled this one in with weed, but I'll just show you the bait before the storm really hits. And that's what I'm using there. A section of lamprey elasticated to it is a ragworm. And there's a hook point. Always keep the hook point clear. And that is ready to send out there. Subject to the weather letting me get out there. It's certainly kicking down now. Makes you wonder why I'm here. Actually, you think I'm the only madman out here? Another guy's just turned up to start fishing. He's putting his, his little shell trap and there's one, two, three, four, I think there's five dog walkers that decided to walk a mile down there and not look at the horizon and which way the wind's blowing. They're going to be very, very wet. Well, the sea was starting to get a bit churned up, the fish came on, and that's what it's all about. Just check out this pouting that's attacked that huge bait that I elasticated together there. It shows you how aggressive this species can get. So I retired to the sanctuary of my little shelter. And you see the rain on the lens there. It was not a nice day, but when you're catching fish like this, it makes it worthwhile. I really am not really bothered what I catch, to be honest, especially off the beach. There's something I don't know prime evil about beach fishing. I just like to catch anything I can and I am grateful for whatever comes along. Oh gosh, it's horrendous out there now. That was a pouting that fish there. Uh, I'd seen a couple of bites, I thought I'd just leave it. You know, I wasn't sure because it's a big bait. 
that shows you lug and lamprey saved me a blank. I'm so grateful, but it's horrendous out there now. Here comes the start of the wind, which they say is going to be 80 miles an hour. And there's a the seagull who wants to come in this camp with me, I think. I can't even get out there to bait up. Well, I can bait up in here, but I'm not going out on that to cast. I sort of just hope I don't get a, a bite until the worst of this goes through. Well, the worst of this is coming through tonight, but I won't be here then. So, lamprey and lug definitely work for fountain anyway. Here we go. This looks like a section of a lamprey, which is a parasite and full of blood. It's blood sucking, that's why it's a really good bait. Get yourself some elasticated thread. This last year I've been using it all the time and instead of putting the worm on the hook and bursting them and all the juice comes out, I've been elasticating the whole shebang together so the worm is barely hooked on what just once absolutely through the head, the thickest part, and then I lightly elasticate the rest around so that a lot of the juices still stay in that area. Anyway, looks like Graham's got a bite there, hiding in the sink for his little shelter. Yes indeed, another fish comes out. This time, it's a fighting whiting. Now, small hooks there have done the job, and that's what I've also been using as well. Well guys, here's a, if I can get this one off the hook, it's fallen off the hook, how lucky is that? Oh, lucky pulling. This one, different one, it's a whiting on small hooks and lugworm. I just throw it, threw it close in um, on about probably a five ounce because it's slack tied at the moment. I just thought I'd take a gamble and there you go. Little whiting, so it's pouting a whiting. Wow, it's looking good at the moment. Let's get this guy back and I'm waiting for one of those big rods to keel over. Another fish on the way. OMG, it's a nice little dogfish. Now, dogfish in a boat might be a bit of a nuisance, but when you catch them off the shore, a couple or three pound dogfish is quite a nice fish. Folding the grip leads, those wires back in, ready for the next cast. Not gonna keep this one, not gonna eat him, no need to. Got sandwiches with me. There he is, the dogfish, a great savior on a rough day. And the tide's pulling hard now. Always make sure that your tripod is anchored down in the shingle. And over the other side of this bank, down at Milford Shingle, this is the opposite side of the sea. There's a big, like a lagoon. I'm going to call it a fleet. There's the bank itself. Sea's on the left, lagoon's on the right. Inside there's some really good flounder fishing, especially around those yachts. So I've seen guys fishing there. In the background is the Isle of Wight, but you can see the width of the shingle bank there. Um, I quite like fishing down there, to be honest, basically, because there's fish. Here comes another pouting. And the reason I like fishing down there is because I can put my gear in the one place. I can make one set up there at the top of the shingle and I don't have to move up and down. And OMG, what's this one? It's a bass. Holy cow, it's only a small bass. But we all love catching them, don't we? It's nice to see that one, even if he's buried under the weed. There it is. Nice little bass. Isle of Wight in the background. Virtually got the entire beach to myself. Get him, my son. We're going to let it go. I just wish I could get bigger ones. OMG, what can I say? What can I say? I'm in a mess, as always. Only gone and got, look at all this cable, I'll actually keep myself in a minute, a nice bass. Oh, man alive. He's even putting his fin up as well, look at that. Not a big fish, look, we all know it's not a big fish, but that's pouting, whiting, dogfish, bass and the storm's not hit yet two other guys have turned up down there so it tells me something let's get this guy unhooked and back ouch they do have spikes it's lucky just nicked on the back there there we go guys oh what can i say what can i say look at that little fish aren't they a neat fish to catch bass no question about that he's got his fin up as well let's get it back result Thanks for watching. I'm going to say this now in case I don't catch anything else. Thanks for watching the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. Tune in again. We'll have another fishing one for you, probably after I've done my work again. Wow, this makes it all worthwhile. Well, as the storm started to hit, I stayed on in darkness, which I didn't want to, and got another little schooly bass, little baby bass there in the dark. So it shows the fish were feeding just before the storm. Generally, it would be after. This time, it really paid dividends for me. 
really changed around. The wind's gone to south, and that's going to come inside my uh, little camp here, my shelter. It's blowing like you wouldn't believe. It's come so fast, it's unbelievable. So I'm going to have to pack up pretty rapidly here because I'm going to get caught out. There's, oh, I can't even look outside. There's one other guy there, but look at this. See if you can see what I've just come in with, with a double shot. I'm going to put the microphone in my mouth. And the pouting on the bike, big time. The wind is a blowing, it's howling. I'm going to try and break my gear down pretty quickly. Nothing on the big base. I'll get these two guys back. Brilliant session. I'm really glad I had it. And we'll see you once again on the bank, the beach, the boat, wherever there's water. No, not the bathroom, no. See you around.